Crystal, you have a really important story to cover right now. Uh, tell us what you're thinking about today. Well, after all these months of horrors, things that once shocked and ignited global debates now pass with barely a word. Attacks on hospitals, once covered in Israeli justifications for what is almost always a war crime, were fiercely contested. Now, scores of hospitals have been attacked. The media doesn't even keep track anymore. As Israeli atrocities have become impossible to defend, the easier path for liberal Zionists has been to simply turn away, plug their eyes and their ears, harden their hearts to the horror. Even for those of us who can't or won't look away, how can any person truly fully grasp the absolute heartbreak and agony represented by images such as this? Now, this map is a result of a Guardian investigation showing the sheer level of complete destruction of the Gaza Strip. The red areas you see there that dominate the map vividly illustrating the impact of a bombing campaign that even Joe Biden has described as indiscriminate. Each red pixel representing a house where a family gathered to celebrate a birth or a death or just a normal, beautiful humdrum of life. A school where children's dreams were nurtured, a hospital where countless newborns took their first breaths in the loving arms of their parents. And now, it's all painted in red and reduced to rubble. Somewhere under these red pixels are also the solemn places where Palestinians said goodbye to their loved ones, buried them according to sacred traditions, laid them to rest with what they hoped would be eternal dignity. Even these graveyards, places of mourning, symbolizing the link across generations, even these were destroyed by the Israeli military. Today, the Israeli military acknowledged that they rolled into a cemetery, took bodies out of graves as part of what they say is a search for Israeli hostages remains. But as the Israeli military put out that statement, we were completing our investigation into the Israeli military's desecration of cemeteries. And what we found is 16 cemeteries across Gaza damaged or destroyed. I do want to warn our viewers that they may find some of these images disturbing. In Gaza, even the dead cannot escape the indignities of war. More than a dozen cemeteries like this one in Jabalia, desecrated by the Israeli military. Gravestones destroyed, soil upturned, tread marks leaving little left for the living to honor their dead. This is that same graveyard before the war. One month later, a series of tread marks can be seen on the northwestern edge. It is no exception. A CNN analysis of videos and satellite imagery found that 16 cemeteries have been damaged or destroyed by the Israeli military since it launched its ground offensive. So 16 cemeteries, as I said there, were identified by CNN as having been desecrated in every way imaginable and some truly beyond the imagination. Bodies exhumed, tombs destroyed, military outpat post established on top of grave sites. Now, it would be easy to overlook the destruction of these places and violation of these bodies after after all, they're already dead, and the scale of suffering of the living understandably takes precedence. But in the desecration of cemeteries, we catch a glimpse of the true goals of this operation, and it has nothing to do with hunting Hamas or with destroying Hamas tunnels. In truth, Israel seeks the total annihilation of Palestinian life. In fact, 80% of the tunnel system remains intact. And while some Hamas fighters, yes, have been killed, the commitment to violent resistance that's the lifeblood of Hamas has probably never been stronger. In practical terms, of organization and power as well, Hamas is apparently regrouping and retaking civilian control of northern Gaza as the IDF has moved south. In fact, Israel's shifting justifications for desecrating the cemeteries are so thin that even CNN is calling bullshit. So in that initial report that I just showed, the IDF claimed, you heard Jeremy Diamond say there, that they raised the cemeteries to search for hostage remains. In a follow-up investigation, though, the Israelis changed their story, attempting to claim that they had no choice but to destroy at least one cemetery because of Hamas tunnels located underneath of it. Having already seen too much, however, CNN reporter Jeremy Diamond does not buy it. Back with our world lead now a week after a CNN investigation into the Israeli military's destruction of cemeteries in Gaza. The IDF invited CNN's Jeremy Diamond to what they say was a Hamas tunnel underneath a Gaza cemetery. Then they refused to show him exactly where the tunnel entrance was in the crater that was once a graveyard. This is no ordinary quarry. It's where the living once buried their dead. Gaza's Bani Sahela Cemetery, hollowed out by Israeli excavators. These were all graves. This was a cemetery, but the military says that they were forced to come in here because they discovered a Hamas tunnel 
running right underneath that cemetery. But the Israeli military failed to prove that stunning claim during a three-hour tour of the area. So in the segment, they go on to show an Israeli general leading Jeremy Diamond through a tunnel network, including a so-called command center that he claims, the general claims, runs underneath of the cemetery. But the entrance that Diamond is led into and out of is not really close to the cemetery. And when Diamond presses for visual confirmation of the tunnel system actually being below the cemetery, the general gets really squirrely and is ultimately caught in a complete lie. We're asking the general if we can actually see the shaft to the tunnel. But the answer is no. So? There's all kinds of machinery which I don't want you to, uh, just to take pictures of the security of my force. But what about if we don't film it? We just no, look with our eyes. If we... you might fall in, the whole thing can collapse. Well, you have to walk to the edge. The edge is not secured. It can collapse. There's machinery, so on. It's, it's not something I'm going to take a risk on. Sorry. The Israeli military later provided this drone footage, showing the tunnel shaft we entered and another one nearby. CNN geolocated the footage using this satellite image. This outline shows where the cemetery once stood, and these are the two tunnel entrances clearly outside the graveyard. As for the tunnel they say they found here, where the cemetery once stood, the military never provided any evidence. And Jake, we pressed the Israeli military multiple times for that evidence, but instead they released a press release today that actually poked more holes in their story. The story that General Goldfuss told us when we were in that underground command center. He said that we were just below the cemetery, but the press release, a map that the Israeli military released today, actually places that command center well outside the bounds of that cemetery. More questions than answers. Actually, I think you pretty clearly got your answer. And if you need more answers, I'd recommend you listen to the detailed plans and grand visions which were laid out at the massive conference that a dozen ministers from Netanyahu's government just attended. Here, they don't hide behind lies about tunnels, hunting Hamas, or human shields. The goal of annihilation is out in the open. And that goal is entirely consistent with the military operation that we have witnessed, the imposed starvation, and the new attacks on vital aid agencies. According to Haaretz, the crowd at this resettlement conference was most rapturous when hearing calls for genocide and ethnic cleansing. Quote, the biggest response came from videos of soldiers in Gaza calling for the Strip to be resettled, shouting out that there are no innocents or photographing themselves with banners for the Katif bloc, that's the former Gaza settlements, the crowd responded to these with deafening cries and whistles. An attorney who was there distributed pamphlets positing a legal rationale for what he openly called Nakba 2.0. A rabbi claimed the only righteous course of action was to conquer the territory and, quote, the destruction and expulsion of anyone who opposes the rule of the Jewish people. Now, this genocidal philosophy explains the rationale behind the utter destruction of civilian life in Gaza far better than any preposterous hunt for Hamas narrative. The attack on UNRWA, the UN agency devoted to Palestinian aid, also fits perfectly with this actual objective. It serves two purposes in the goal of annihilation. The first is quite obvious. At a time when Palestinians in Gaza are eating grass and drinking polluted water and literally starving to death, defunding UNRWA means more suffering more death, more pressure on the population to flee out of the Strip entirely, never to return, just as those conference attendees are very clear that they ultimately want. As Bibi's communications minister put it at the ethnic cleansing conference, quote, voluntary emigration is at times a situation you impose until they give their consent. But it is also an assault on the very idea of Palestinians as a people with any right to self-determination. Because UNRWA's mission is to serve Palestinian refugees, which necessarily means that Palestinians are a people, that they deserve a state, and that they will remain refugees with a right of return until such time as a just land settlement occurs. For the Israelis, this is unacceptable. Palestinians, their families, their aspirations, their places of worship and education and daily life, and even cemeteries should be crushed into oblivion until as a people, they just simply give up. All the IDF lies are really in service of hiding this true goal. And even the dead aren't left in peace. What chance do the living 
stand. And Emily, this is one of those stories that at this point in the war- Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new. We wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.